Hello again, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and today's class is Data Deduplication Introduction. So this is one of the new technologies that's been around for a little while now that is becoming more and more and more valuable and useful, and yet many technologists don't know about it, they don't think about it, and therefore they're having a lot of problems in the real world. So any IT person knows one of the biggest problems in the real world in, whether it's the enterprise world or the small business world or even if you're in your home it's being able to store the amount of data that is currently being created. So this has been a problem all the way back since I started in the 90s. You know, back then when we had one gig hard drives, we were filling up those one gig hard drives with Word documents and emails. And then we got like 50 gig hard drives and we started filling them up with music. And now we have like three terabyte hard drives and we're filling that up with high definition video. The problem is we keep downloading and we keep storing all of this data and it just gets to be more and more and more and more and the more users you have storing more data it can just become an atrocious nightmare especially especially when you're you're dealing with a company when you have a hundred employees or a thousand employees <gasps> It, it, it's it really it can be a just huge monumental task in order to deal with the size of data that the, those folks will be creating so what data deduplication tries to do is it tries to shrink the amount of data that's actually being stored while still making everybody think that they still have all of the data that they're storing basically what happens with data deduplication at the end of the day to make it very 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 simple is if multiple people save the exact same document instead of saving multiple copies of that document in those multiple user folders what data du deduplication does is it will only save one copy of that documented file and then have a pointer in the user's files or folders that point back to that that one unique document. So back before, in the old days, right, if you downloaded a music file and, and somebody else downloaded the same music file, somebody else downloaded the same music file, somebody else downloaded the same music file, if you were going to store that on a single server, if you were going to put that in your shared folder or you're gonna put that in your user folder on a single server, that means that music file would result all would reside in your folder and the other person's 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 folder so let's say that's five megabytes in size it's a five megabyte uh, music file it's a little big and you have five people storing the exact same five megabyte file that means you're using 25 megabytes of space in order to save that file so what data deduplication does is it goes through and it scans the hard drive looking for ex exact exact duplicates of files when it finds the exact duplicates of files what it will do is it'll save one copy but then for everybody else it will have a pointer that goes back to that one copy um, so so that they will be able to access it now if anybody makes any kind of slight change whatsoever what will happen in the server is a server will make an exact copy of the, the what's been created for the data deduplication the person will make the edits to that exact copy and then that edited copy will be saved as its own original. So when you're thinking about data deduplication, this only occurs for files that are identical identical, perfectly, 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 utterly identical. If they are identical, one copy will be saved with pointers. But if there is any modification by any user, that modification will be saved to the user's folder with the modification. So imagine you have one Word document and five people have a copy of that exact same Word document. So while it's exactly the same, there will only actually be one Word document and there will be pointers that go to it. But as soon as one person modifies their version of that Word document, then the copy will be created with the edits and that will be saved for that user. But now, so now instead of having five copies of the document, you'll actually have two out there. One that's the original and one that's the edits. 
just to make sure this makes sense, let's go over um, to the little whiteboard right now so I can just kind of explain this to you again just to really make sure you understand what's going on. So, so in the old days, right, in the old days, you know, we had our server and we had the folder structure in our server. And so if we had four users out here and they all saved a document, let's, let's say you decided to email a document or a video to all these people. So let's say you decided to, to email a one gig video to four people. And these four people had their own folders on the local file server. So you sent the one gig file to this person the identical one gig file to this person, the identical one, uh, one gig file to this person, and the identical one gig file to this person. So they all got their file. Well, they all, you know, diligently then saved that to the file server. So basically you have the one file, they have an identical copy of that file, and they all save the same file to the file server within their folder structure. So these are their user folders. So now that one gig file now takes four gigs of space on the file server. So even though it's identical, even though it's a copy, it's all their individual copies that get saved on the file server. So again, when you're thinking about an office environment or an enterprise environment, uh, this can get big really, really, really quickly. Because, I mean, even if you think of something, let's say a 10 megabyte file, right? You think, eh, 10 megabyte file, you know, how, how big is that? That's not really any big deal. But think if, if you sent a 10 megabyte file to a thousand users to a thousand users on an enterprise environment. That would end up taking 10 gigs of space if they all share, uh, saved it onto their, their, the same file server, right? So that one 10 megabyte file sent to 10,000, or sent to a thousand people ten, takes 10 gigs of space. Now add that up with all the files that are saved in an enterprise environment and that can get massive, massive very quickly. So what happens in data deduplication is you have the server, and on the server, uh, either through the operating system or through a special piece of software that's installed, it will be able to do this data deduplication. So you send the file to four people again. So it's, it's that one gig file, and you send that one gig file to four people again. Now those four people now are dil diligently going to save that one gig file to the file server like they did before. So to them, this is going to be absolutely, absolutely seamless. But now what's going to happen is that the deduplication routine is going to see that this file is identical for all people. So one copy of the file will be saved and then a pointer will be put in these users folders to, to point back to that single one gig file. So now for this file server, instead of storing four gigs of data, it can now store one gig. The end users, they don't, they don't see, they don't see this. To, to them, it is absolutely seamless. Now with these pointers, the big thing to understand too is that you can put your own security on this. Just as if the, the, the file or the, the, the data was residing actually in your folder. So you can set security, you can set sharing, you can do any of that kind of stuff on this because to you, again, it'll be seamless. It'll be as if the data is sitting in your folder. Now the question becomes Comes, you know, well, what happens? Okay, let's say this user here goes to that one gig file and they make a modification, they make a change. Well, if they go to that file and they make a modification and they make a change, what will happen then is the deduplication routine will store that change, that copy now, into their folder and now the original copy will only be shared by three people. So you will have your original copy, but now that the, the other one will, will only be shared by three. So that's basically how this data deduplication routine works. So you have the, the identical file, instead of that actually being stored in everybody's individual folder, it's stored at one place, and pointers are then used so that the users can access it. As far as the end user is concerned, when they look at their folder structure, when they look at Explorer or whatever else, they will see the document sitting in that folder. They will see it 
just like normal. They'll be able to open it like normal. They'll be able to set permissions and security and whatever else like normal. They'll be able to edit it like normal. They it, to them, it will seem as if that data is sitting in their folder, when in reality, it is simply a pointer that points back to the original copy. And again, this can spread out, you know, for four users, a thousand users, 10,000 users. And in that way, you can save a lot of storage space uh, on your servers by basically being able to run this data deduplication routine. Now, data deduplication, this is a technology. This, this isn't one specific problem product. It's not like Symantec or Microsoft or anything like that. This is an overall technology that many different vendors use. So Microsoft has it built into Server 2012 if you want to use it there. EMC, who deals with SANS. NetApps, who deals with SANS, Symantec, with some of their backup software. This is implemented in many different ways across many different products. So it's one of those things that you need to think about. You need to be aware of that it exists. And and then when you go to buy your next server, when you go to buy your next NAS device, when you need to go, when you go to buy your next SAN, you need to see if it has a data deduplication capability and then figure out how to use it. Again, this, this, this is just a great way. Even though storage space seems inexpensive, um, I just went out to the store yesterday. I bought a three terabyte hard drive for $150. So that seems very, very inexpensive. But remember, in the enterprise world, you have to think about not just the expense of the hardware, but also the maintenance, the power cost, all of that. Again, you get 1,000, 10,000 users all sharing basically a lot of the same documents, and you can have a huge cost that you can minimize very easily by simply having something like a data deduplication routine. So all data deduplication does is when data is stored, when files are stored to the server or the SAN or the NAS, when it detects files that are identical, and I mean perfectly, utterly identical, then instead of creating two, or instead of saving two copies of the file, it'll save one and then have pointers to that one. Again, if, if one person modifies anything in that file, it is now not identical, so that will be moved to their folder, and the identical one will stay where it's at. I hope that, hope that, that makes some sense there. So this class was data deduplication introduction. Again, if you're interested in using this, just go out. The next time you're buying a server or a SAN or a NAS, look to see if the uh, the capability is there. Most of the modern operating systems, the SAN, the NAS device, allow this, um, and they. they they have varying degrees uh, of quality, <laughs> so so make sure you go out and uh, if if you're going to be buying this uh, in in the device, make sure that you you do your research and that it works well. But if you buy something that works well, this really 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 can make your life a lot easier and your maintenance cost a lot less expensive. So as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy. Today's class was a data deduplication introduction. As always, I enjoy teaching this class and I look forward to seeing you at the next one.